Reading the water is simply locating where trout live there. It's finding where the highest concentration of trout are. Join me in volume one of Reading the Water, Small Rivers. Hey, I'm Mike, Northwest School of Fly Fishing, the Old Fish Hobo. Reading the Water, Volume 1, Small Rivers. That's the video that we want to show you. It's the video that I made just last week. Um, reading the water is hard to tell someone how to read a water. You really got to need to be on the river and show them this and show them that and how this works. That helps a person much more than listening to me explain how to read water. And the, uh, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. But when reading water, what we're really looking for are what seams are on the river. The seams are where fast water and slow water meet. Trout like to live on or round the seams. Uh, and what we're trying to do in reading water is find these seams. Uh, and these seams are formed by compression. Compression is when water's pushed or compressed or stopped. And those create seams. And the characteristics of seams are uh, how deep the water is, uh, how broken the water is on the surface, the clarity of the water. Is the water uh, dark green? Is it lime green? Is it clear? Uh, the speed of the water is, is very, very important in determining uh, where those trout live. What underwater obstructions are on the river? Uh, we need to know this. So when we're reading the water, we're looking for those places uh, that I just described because more than likely, that's where the concentration of trout will be. And finally, it's just a gut feeling. Uh, so it's just a gut feeling. Uh, there's a famous line, the river runs through it. Uh, in, in, in a few more years, I'll be able to think like a trout. And that's really what we're trying to do is really stop breathing air and start breathing water. Think like a trout and that, get that gut feeling. Economy of time dictates that we spend all our time fishing the most productive sections of the river. Uh, if we're not doing that, we're wasting time on the water. So. I'm going to show you the, the video coming up. I'm going to point out different things on the video that I see and that I'm fishing. Uh, and I'm going to catch some trout. We're going to see some trout being caught. Uh, but we're looking and fishing those seams. So here it comes. This is a classic S curve or the river's curving. And the seam you can see is on the far right bank. There's an inside and outside seam. And I'll wait across the river just to get on the inside seam. I always want to be on the inside of it curve. This is a classic tail out where the compression pushes the river through. Uh, you're going to find fish on the inside of that and on the outside of that to where the speed of the seam is equal from side to side, which you really don't see here. But then you're going to see it go into the curve. Here you're going to see the river relatively calm above, but then it's compressed splitting into two different tail outs. And you'll find fish at this particular point all through there, uh, all the way down to the next compression. Boulders. Boulders are great places. You have multiple seams here, both underwater and above water. You really gotta watch these because they form these little pockets and these little tail outs uh, behind each, each boulder. And uh, don't ignore the underwater boulders. Fly fishermen just love boulders. Boulders equals pocket water, and behind every pocket is a trout. Yeah, little tiny tail outs. Here's an example of an above water boulder behind them and an underwater boulder in front of them. Here are the anglers on the inside seam, and you can see the clarity of the water is really dark along the seam. That's where trout like to be. Here you can see the tail out, but see how darker the water is there? That's the clarity I'm talking about. 
Here the river is in a curve and it's on the far bank has created a grass line. That's where trout will be. They like to underneath that and that's where they can hide and as well as feed. Boat might fly right through there. Here the angler is doing just that, working that grass line, drifting this fly right on the edge of the grass. Classic case of being on the inside of a curve and working that darker water on the outside. Eventually you're going to get rewarded. Nice. Here's a good one. See the shade? See how he drifts his fly into the shade? Trout love to be in the shade. When you see a uh, shade of a tree or a boulder, uh, always flip a fly through Got there. Uh, they don't like sun. Trout don't have sunglasses. They don't have eyelids. And when they can get out of the sun, they'll do that. In this particular case, this is where Austin's really working his fly through the shade. Reading the water is searching out and finding places where trout live. We need to find those places and we need to fish them. But then sometimes they're just everywhere. 